Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com, the YouTube channel, and No DQ and A videos affiliate, RingsideNews.com. Got your questions here via spring.me slash Aaron Rift regarding WWE and other topics. So let's get started with the first one today from King Codis. What do you think about WWE not making the signing of Sting a top priority? Well, to be honest, it doesn't really surprise me all that much. WWE already set plans for WrestleMania regarding The Undertaker. It's expected that Undertaker will be facing Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. And Sting possibly going to WWE is something that just came up in the past few weeks when his TNA deal expired. I think that it was perhaps best to do Sting versus Undertaker a few years ago when there was all the internet hype when the mock posters were made uh, 2011 that was when there was a lot of people talking about that that was probably your best opportunity to do that match but Sting ended up staying with TNA now WWE has other things going on and I do think they want Sting in WWE but at the same time I think that if he doesn't come into WWE, it's not the end of the world for them. Um, you know, I got another question here regarding the network, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, I think WWE would be interested in bringing in Sting to help promote the network and also possibly the Hall of Fame. But as far as him wrestling in a marquee match at WrestleMania, I, I just don't see that as a priority for them at this point. And, um, you know, can't really blame them because... They reached out to Sting several times over the years, and he decided to stay with TNA. And um, next question here uh, comes from WWE Fan Five. Hey Aaron, am I the only one who doesn't want to see a 48-year-old versus a 54-year-old? I just don't think the match itself between Sting and Taker would be that good. Uh, that's certainly another concern that both guys are older, and Undertaker needs somebody younger. Um, to help carry him through a match at this point, and there's a lot of doubt if Sting is that guy. Now, apparently Sting has been open to the idea of working out the match with Undertaker and training and preparing for it. Um, so I think at the end of the day, if this match was to happen, let's say, just for argument's sake, if they did the, the match this year, I think that it would be fine. I think that if Sting got himself in tip-top shape, you know, he doesn't have to wear the shirt, he can go out there and uh, be as close to the old Sting as possible. I, I think they would have a very good match technically, and obviously you'd have the crowd heat, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think it would still be a classic. But yeah, time is definitely running out, I think, for them to do this match. And, uh, you know, as I said, WWE's already... Uh, been planning out Brock Lesnar versus Undertaker, and I don't know if they're going to change that now. And uh, maybe we could see Sting and Undertaker at next year's WrestleMania, but then again, that's a whole other year, another year that both guys are older and uh, more broken down. So it, it's really very much up in the air at this point if we'll ever see that match. All right, this one comes from Sticky B. Hey, Aaron, with the WWE Network approaching, is Sting going to promote the WCW pay-per-views? But my question is, how will they promote the ECW pay-per-views? Well, yeah, as I mentioned, Sting um, obviously would be used to help promote the network. And now regarding ECW pay-per-views, I could definitely see some of the old-time ECW stars being brought back. Um, Tommy Dreamer's been doing stuff with TNA right now, but um, there's plenty of guys that they can bring in. Terry Funk, Shane Douglas, Sabu, and uh, the names go on. You know, RVD makes perfect sense to bring him back and uh, use him to help promote the network and the ECW pay-per-views. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of guys, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking there's a good chance, uh, especially on the uh, February 24th Raw, that we might get to see uh, a few ECW legends. It would make sense to me to have those guys appear on Raw uh, to help launch the network. All right, this next one comes from Dave451985, or Dave451985, I'm not sure. Whatever happened, to a steel cage match Whatever happened to having a steel cage match where you have to escape to win as the only option? To me, the whole match just isn't as exciting with the door and pinfall submissions. I completely agree with you. One of the things I liked about the steel cage match stipulation was that 
it was two guys that had a grudge and they were going to settle it in the cage and um, you know you didn't have the pinfalls or submissions it wasn't overly complicated you you fight and when one guy can no longer continue you just leave the cage and that's the end of it um, you know to me that was what a cage match was all about and um, you know I don't like the fact that they have pinfalls and submissions now I can understand the reasoning behind it uh, with pinfalls and submissions you know it adds to the possibilities of how the match can end and therefore it's more exciting to people um, you know it makes it more unpredictable but I, I really do prefer the cage matches uh, having the, the rules where you just have to either climb over the cage or go through the door and um, you know that's what makes a cage match special when you have pinfalls and submissions it's basically uh, a regular match with a fence around the ring so it, it, it just uh, waters down the stipulation in my opinion so um, and I, I especially do not like the tag team cage matches when um, you know a cage match is supposed to be anything goes and uh, you have the tag teams following the rules the traditional tag team rules where they tag in and out uh, just doesn't make any sense and I was never a big fan of those uh, those kind of tag team cage matches all right, this next one comes from Armada88. Hey, Aaron, now that Lita has been inducted for the Hall of Fame this year, what do you think of AJ Lee inducting her if WWE couldn't get someone like Trish Stratus, as Lita was a huge reason why AJ decided to become a wrestler? Please answer in video. And I got another question here regarding Lita from Mario Jeb 7 Hey, Aaron, who should induct Lita into the Hall of Fame, Matt Hardy, Edge, or CM Punk? Well, if CM Punk's not coming back anytime soon, you can cross him off the list. Um, regarding Lita and who should induct her, I like the idea of AJ Lee being the one to induct her because, um, you know, she idolized Lita and, you know, everybody has seen that video or most people have seen that video by now of um, Lita when she was a teenager getting to meet, um, or excuse me, AJ Lee as a teenager getting to meet Lita and, you know, she was breaking down and crying and getting all emotional, so... I think it would be really cool for AJ Lee to be the one to induct her uh, since she's the current generation of divas inducting the past generation. Um, but, you know, Trish Stratus seems like your next best bet because, you know, they work side by side and, you know, they had the uh, feud going back and forth over the, over the years. Um, Matt Hardy, don't see that happening. Edge um, is a possibility, but I think that's more of a long shot than uh, Trish Stratus or a or, uh, AJ Lee. All right, this next one comes from the Aussie boy. Hey, Aaron, do you see Randy Orton and John Cena being the last two in the Elimination Chamber? Then Royal Rumble happens all over again with the Wyatt family attacking Cena again and helping Orton retain, and they book John Cena versus Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. That actually seems like a, uh, a very good possibility for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Um, you know, I'm definitely expecting Randy Orton to retain the title. I don't think Daniel Bryan will be winning it. And, um, you know, I could very well see one of two possibilities. One is that it's down to Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan, and um, Kane will interfere and cost Daniel Bryan the match. Um, or it's down to Randy Orton and John Cena, and um, you have Kane come out and maybe cost Daniel Bryan, and then when it's down to Orton and Cena... Uh, you know, the lights go out or whatever. The Wyatt family appears in the ring and uh, they take out John Cena. Um, I could definitely see that happening. Something, uh, you know, there needs to be a good reason uh, behind John Cena versus Bray Wyatt. There needs to be some sort of motivation for John Cena to have that match with Bray Wyatt. And uh, Wyatt costing him the WWE title um, seems like uh, the most logical storyline. So I, I think that uh, even though they already did that at the Royal Rumble... Um, you know, I could see uh, history repeating itself and WWE repeating the same storyline again as we've seen them do over the past several months. Um, and Randy Orton, once again, uh, the so-called underdog, retains the title. So, yeah, I mean, I definitely see that that whole scenario as a, as a strong possibility for Elimination Chamber. All right, that'll do it for this edition of No dq &A Video, as well as The Crows Outside. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you enjoyed it, please share it on Facebook or Twitter. And uh, please spread the word about the No DQ CAW channel on YouTube. 
And uh, stay tuned to NoDQ.com for late breaking news regarding Elimination Chamber and Sting and RVD, Chris Jericho. Lots of news going on in the wrestling world right now, especially as WrestleMania draws closer. Um, so with that being said, I will see you guys next time for another edition of No DQ&A Video.